Cannabis Isle Restoration Project, and it's designed to cap um, just over eight acres of muck sediments within the lagoon to create intertidal habitat, um, including mangroves, spartina, which is a salt grass, and oyster habitat. Muck is comprised of silty sands and has a high organic content. Now, the muck originally comes from stormwater discharges that are suspended sediments in the water column and they trickle down and settle out as this muck deposit that covers everything, covers the natural substrate, covers our sand, our oysters, our reef, and it's something that is a big problem for the Lake Worth Lagoon. This is probably one of the deepest, largest muck capping projects in Palm Beach County, and we've pretty much had every challenge possible when dealing with uh, muck capping. What's interesting about this project is you, other projects we've done, we've gotten so good at placing rock, placing sands and other project areas, but this is unique because we had this huge muck deposit. It's, it's very, it was very much a, a pilot project to try to try to cap this muck without having it move and trying to get a, a cap that would hold and, and something that would layer it over the top and it has been achieved with this methodology. We can control the settlements that are underneath by slowing down the sand, placing a small amount of sand on top of the sediments without trying to disturb them. That's probably one of the experience that we have with muck capping is we know some of the issues that are concerned when doing the process. The main challenge is that the thickness of muck here is pretty extensive. It ranges anywhere from a foot of muck to, in some areas, seven feet of muck, which makes um, placing sand and using equipment on it very difficult. Behind me is a long stick excavator, which we've typically used for a portion of this project. Since then, we switched over to the sand shooter, which has a lot more accuracy, is able to place the sand a further distance, and produces more volume. Utilizing a machine called a sand shooter, which actually sprays out sand through the, and it drops through the water column and provides a more even, uniform layer of sand on top. We will propel the sand and shoot it a distance about 65 to 70 feet. We designed the system to be able to work in for muck capping, backfill of seawalls, and for hot spots for beach restoration. Some of the advantages of using the sand shooter is the placement of the sand. When you're using a uh, long stick or excavating equipment, placing the volume, placing the material from the bucket, a lot of times will create a muck wave. With this system, it's, it's just as efficient, but it allows the sand to be dispersed evenly and not such a big volume at one time. And if we do acquire a muck wave, we're able to sp extend our speed of our machine, go out there and start doing the reverse by instead of pushing the muck wave away from us, we're able to bring it back to us, capture it, and then cap it. Between the two methodologies of placement with a bucket versus the sand shooter, the sand shooter seems to really be achieving what we've been looking for as far as um, raining the sand over the top of the muck and not displacing it, not causing it to stir back up. So this is really, truly forming a, a thin layer cap over the top. And as it rises and comes up to the elevations, to the wetland elevations we're trying to achieve, then it'll promote the growth of the mangroves and oyster habitat that we're trying to create here. On this project, using the sand shooter, it's allowed this project to be cost effective, it's been efficient, and it's been environmentally friendly. Just owning a piece of equipment really doesn't make you qualified to be able to come out and meet some of the challenges. Palm Beach County with the ERM department felt very comfortable that we'd be able to accomplish this after coming up with a, a tentative work plan in place to see if we could capture capping this muck area. And so far we've met their expectations.